Thank you so much for tuning in. This is The Throne Room, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the three mistakes that Littlefinger made with Sansa. So if you have not subscribed, please go ahead and do so at this time. Um, at the moment, we're going to talk a little bit about season six and what happened between Sansa and Littlefinger and also the mistakes he made with her, because I feel like just like Brienne, as I mentioned on my last episode, that, you know, there's been some soft... And I want to make sure to expand on that today. So without further ado, this is The Throne Room. My name is Elle, and we're going to talk a little bit about the three mistakes he made with Sansa Stark. Now, the number one mistake he made was, you know, he fell for her, just like he did with Caitlyn. And I think that that's a bad mistake that he made um, just based off of his character. And, you know, he's just, his whole life's been motivated basically by the fact that, you know, he couldn't have her. So it strove, he strove to be a man of power and, and influence. And I actually do admire him for that because there's a lot of people in life these days that don't go ahead and take life by the cojones and just does what they need to do to get where they need to go. Now, I apologize for saying so, but that's just the way things are. And so there's a little bit of that um, angst going on in him, like, you know, I'm going to show everybody that I'm, I'm the man, you know? And I kind of respect that about Peter Baelish. Um, he actually has a lot of spies and people that find out information for him, but there's always a time that things turn back around. And the person that you think that's not as smart or intelligent or, you know, she's watching everything that he does and she's learning from him how to be cunning and how to be secretive and also how to keep her information to herself. She knows he talks a lot and at the same time, you don't really hear Sansa saying so much. So the first mistake he made was Sansa knows a lot of information about him. She could literally just tell on him, go back to the veil and say, look, he killed her and he killed Liza and I really do appreciate the fact that he helped my family, but whatever. And it's just like a shame because at the same time he's sitting there laughing about all that, he killed her daddy, you know? He really did. He killed her dad and then with the Red Wedding, I think he had something to do with that as well, as far as I know. So there's a lot of stuff going on and I feel that... Um, in this case, we need to think about the fact that, you know, the mistake he made is that he know, she knows a lot of information, but at the same time, there is information in there that she can't tell, you know, based on the fact that, you know, Cersei wants her dead. Um, Cersei's going to be an issue. I'll talk about that in a second as well. But at the end of the day, Sansa knows a lot about Littlefinger. That's the first mistake he made with that. Number two is he has a conspiracy theory going on and there is one person he forgot about, and that's Varys. Varys knows a lot of information about Littlefinger, and with the stroke of a finger, he could say everything, anything he wants. And what I mean by that is he can write a letter and say, look, whatever. You know, somebody wrote a letter that nobody even knows where it came from, so we need to figure out who that letter was written by. They say it was Sansa. You know, they got theories everywhere. Everybody got their own theories, their own thoughts and beliefs on what they think may have happened. And also great, great predictions are out there. I mean, there are a lot of YouTubers that definitely have a lot of information about the Game of Thrones books also with the, with the show. But I feel like it's moving towards a different area. So the th thing I have with Varys is like he can't play both sides forever there has to be a point somewhere down the line where he lets himself be known what his true motives are and unfortunately I thought they were friends because it kind of gives you the idea like when they're talking but I think Varys is start is collecting information as well just like Sansa you know she's he's playing close with him but he also knows a lot of information about him I feel like there's nothing that people could find out about Varys that they wouldn't say that he was trying to help other people but there's also untraceable information about both of them that kind of mingle together so with that being said he could write a letter the stroke of a finger and all the information could be out or he could just tell someone to tell someone else and or pay someone off i don't know i don't know how much it varies his bank account is but let's just say he's not poor but we never see where he sleeps and i think that that's very interesting that we don't know so much about varies but we know where little finger is most of the time but he also has some secret areas as well that we don't know about so with that being said i feel like with varies he's a loose cannon for little finger and unfortunately i feel like i don't know what was going on in the cave you know he was trying to get him to admit to to be on Joffrey's side, and and Ed and Ned Stark did that. Edard Stark did that. I'm sorry, I always call him Ned. Um, Edard Stark did that, and so when he did do that, that 
still made him get killed. So Joffrey didn't even care. He still killed him in front of his daughters, killed him in front of everybody. Um, I think that Joffrey was kind of crazy because he was mixed bred between two people that were so closely related. So you might have had a little bit of mental problems going on. You know, I, I don't know, but it was just nuts. Why would you get off on killing someone else's father in front of them? And then after they, they get married to someone else, you're still tormenting them. Um, I feel like the mistake that he made was that um, he actually did not think about the fact that Varys knows a lot of information and without thinking, he still doesn't believe, I guess, that he's going to come, you know, against him. Um, even though this is not a part of the Sansa theory, I think that's number two, but I'll give you the other three. Um, ultimately, I think the second issue with Sansa is, is that he, 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 in this case, he's done some things and he's jealous of her brother. And I think if she has a choice, she's not going to choose him. Um, that's the second mistake he made was that he thinks that he can get Sansa by himself and just manipulate the hell out of her to do what he wants. Um, I feel like the little boy is also going to get a lot older this year. And I think that this is going to end up blowing up in his face. But at the same time, the way he was looking at her all creepy and shit, I think that this is going to end up blowing up in his goddamn face. And the reason why is because you can't, Blood is always thicker than water. You're never going to get somebody like, even though her and John were not the closest, now her mom's gone. She doesn't have to feel a certain way about John, you know, because she knows at the end of the day, he's her real brother because he's going to protect her and make sure she's good. And I feel like, you know, Littlefinger did the same thing. You know, you need those type of people in your life for whatever reasons, but she doesn't owe him nothing. And I feel like at the same time before she felt like, you know, he was her friend and all of this. And I think that and when she really finds out what, what he's done, I think she's going to go back to the same ways with Ramsey. And you're going to see a problem. I mean, I wouldn't even be surprised if she was able to, like, feed him to the dragons or something. Or everybody does when they find out all of his stuff that he's doing. I mean, we never know what's going to happen in Season 7. But I think that this is going to be a grand um, platform this year for Littlefinger's all his stuff to come out. I mean, he's went through seven seasons without any kind of adversary besides that man that he killed because he didn't want the gesture to tell on him. Um, but I feel like in this case, there's a lot of loose information out there with people like Sansa and Varys that have, you know, information against him. Um, we'll also go into the other people as well. Um, when I do my little finger series, I'll get all my information compiled and then we'll, well, I'll discuss, you know, definitely discuss what I feel like is going to happen. With that being said, um, the third thing that I feel like, you know, is going to come back and bite him in the complete ass is because he killed Ned Stark. <laughs> Ned Stark, Ned Art Stark, I'm sorry. He killed him. So, you know, with that being said, that's the biggest problem. He killed her dad. Arya's going to come back. She's going to kill him like so many times. And I feel like this is something that we have to actually just put out there. I mean, I think that everything, the, all the lies, all the deceit, the all these games are going to come back on season seven. I've always believed that seven is always the holy number. I am a Christian, but I'm also someone that believes in the higher power as well. But I feel like this year is going to be the seventh time that we went into another season. And I feel like this is the season that he's going to get everything that he, he's been, you know, that he's got coming to him. So it's just, I mean, I like Littlefinger as a person, you know, I like his character. He was actually in Shanghai Nights when they were in the UK. He did an outstanding ex performance, but I, I mean, I did an outstanding performance here, but I just feel like it's, it's crazy. You know, like people like him always get what's coming to them because they put it out there. You know, what you put out there comes back to you. And, you know, it's sad to say that, you know, this is going to end up biting him in the ass. I'm sorry. But at the end of the day, he needs to basically learn to just move on and just let go of the fact you think you're going to be anything because you're just a dirty creep. I mean, it's hard. Like, they'll never respect you as a person, Littlefinger. I mean, as a character. And the reason why they will never respect him is because he has a lot of stuff going on. Like, he runs like unscrupulous businesses and when they find out that he's spying on everybody i think that's going to even make it even worse i mean he's actually someone that's in the court doing something at this point in time he does have to go back in front of cersei and it's come about that time i feel like at this case he's gonna get talked he's gonna get he's gonna get talked to about people saw what happened they saw where that came from that's the 
other thing he forgot about. When those people came in from the veil, they know. People know where they came from. I think he should have stayed his ass over there with Liza, but she would have killed Sansa, so he kind of had, she had to go. Whatever. I don't hate him for that. I think she had to go anyway. She was kind of nuts, and she just had to go. But, you know, she was trying to kill Sansa, so he had to defend her, and I feel like that's something he has over her head at the end of the day. And also, I think she started liking him, too. So, I wouldn't be surprised if Sansa just married him to kill him and found out right at that time that she, you know, oh, man, I don't love him. He's not some guy that's just helping me along the way. I'm going to kill this guy because he killed my daddy, and I'm going to do him just like Ramsey. And you got to watch people like that. Those quiet chicks, you always got to watch them because it's like, what? You know, like, really? You did that, and you just can't believe they did it. I've met a lot of females. I'm not saying I've met people that done stuff like that to people, but, you know, drastic stuff where they, like, move out and there's nothing left in the house, you know, or they leave them for someone else and post pictures on social media like nothing happened, like the person didn't even exist. You know, stuff like that. But with this, this is a little bit different because this is back in the medieval times where women were actually, like, you know, you weren't allowed to talk. You kind of, like, Sansa was, like, embody that whole, you know, I'm a fair lady type thing and I think she's fallen out of love of being a queen or wanting to be in power just because of what's happened to her in the process I mean as soon as she started going after Joffrey she backstabbed her sister she you know she backstabbed her family even Joffrey threw her on the ground told her you know to take off her clothes I mean he degraded her and I feel like she has a mixed result of falling in love with the fairy tale and I think it's gonna blow up in Littlefinger's face so thank you so much for tuning into the throne room I I know today was a little bit longer than usual but I just wanted to give out all the information I feel that's gonna happen in season seven as all as well as the three things that Littlefinger made a mistake with in season six and everything (laughs) before that you know he was kind of weird you know creepy looking out her like that and you know he did try to kiss her before that didn't work you know he's just falling he's falling out of favor and it's just a matter of time you know he's gonna get what's coming to him but at this time go ahead and subscribe to me at this time thank you for tuning in this has been sponsored by channelclip.net your videos your way it's actually a new small social network for video that you can actually upload your videos on don't forget to check out my boy mj kappa music on there he's really on fire i love what he has to offer to the music game kind of reminds me of rick roll uh, but at this time thank you so much for tuning in and next week i'll tell you a little about his project that he has going on it's kind of reminds me of the game of thrones it's totally original i'll also be talking about an, another group of people that are doing some film that's kind of like that i'll be giving my um, small review on their video just to kind of give you some information about this group they're from the uk and they are fans of game of thrones and they actually came out with a um web a web movie that you can watch for free so i want you to go ahead and come back to us next week otherwise thank you for tuning into the throne room go ahead and bend the knee and subscribe and come back to me so you can chill with me and we can talk game of thrones as well is Da Vinci's Themons and also Outlander and I will be giving out more content daily. I don't like to talk about the same show over and over again so I'll be kind of mixing it up giving you a little bit of the Young Pope until I'm done with that. Um, also I have the tutors coming up after um, after you know this actual episode's over. You'll be hearing a little bit about uh, the first episode of the tutors. I'll be talking about that and giving you some information about this very true um, almost true events that happened in real life with King Henry the eighth. Um, I think that you should definitely check it out. Um, let me know what you think if you haven't already watched the show. Um, and actually, if you don't know already, there's a second season of the young Pope that's going to happen. So it's worth it to even watch those reviews of the young Pope. I know a lot of people like the game of Thrones, you know, but we got to kind of spread our, our, uh, our vision out because that show is going to be over in a couple of seasons. And we just want to, you want to make sure to have something else to, to talk about, um, and do you know there's other shows that are worthy of your attention like you know the outlanders really good that's renewed for another season and there's a couple or more seasons that have happened and i'll be expanding on my first um review that i did i kind of stopped short of doing videos for a moment and i'll be picking up on that so i will be giving you two episodes into one in a bite-sized episode each uh, time but without further ado go ahead and subscribe and come back to me next time otherwise thank you so much for tuning into the throne room um help me get to a thousand views so that i can start you know definitely um you know help myself (laughs) but i don't really care because at the same time i actually do have other commentary channels and other 
stuff I do. Uh, besides doing the throne room, I actually am a radio host and my first loves music, but I also love commentary and TV. So I'm actually a host on radio to tv.com where independent music lives. Otherwise I am on here and I am L otherwise my name is DJ harmony. Uh, my real name is Camille. I just want to give you my real name, but I have a couple things that I do online and this is the second one. So I thank you so much for tuning in. Otherwise, go ahead and be the need and subscribe and come back to me next week. We will be talking a little bit more about what went down on the next episode of the Medici Masters of the Renaissance, Masters of Florence, whatever you want to call it. Um, we'll be talking a little bit more about episode three and four, as well as the young Pope outlander. And, uh, we will be debuting Da Vinci's demons and also the last kingdom in the next month. So you might want to check me out on that. I'll be finishing up my other series and then just talking about those two for the next couple months with the game of Thrones. will be mixed in through the week. So you might want to check me out on Sunday. I will be coming up with a schedule of different videos that you can check out and, uh, just come and hang out with me. So thank you for tuning in. I appreciate the 40 subscribers that I have so far. This is a brand new channel. Hope to grow it larger, but otherwise I love doing this and I appreciate you taking the time to tune in with me. Have a great rest of your evening and thank you for coming by.